Hey everyone, this is Jeff Crawl, math coach for New Tech, and this video will serve as a quick overview to the hows and what's of coaching math teachers. As a former math teacher and current coach, I understand both the difficulties with teaching mathematics in a New Tech environment, as well as the difficulties with coaching math teachers. I also realize that some coaches and advocates find it difficult to coach up math teachers due to their unfamiliarity or anxiety with the subject. And I guess to that I would first say, relax. It's okay you're not an expert in this area. You can still coach math teachers in a reflective and meaningful way. While the focus of this video will be on coaching a problem-based learning environment, some of the strategies discussed are applicable to a PBL classroom as well. My hope is that as a coach, advocate, or administrator, this video will help you to not let the barrier of math anxiety prevent you from cognitively coaching your math teachers and pushing them to reflect more deeply on their practice. In order to engage students in the practice of mathematics, we need to shift from a transmission model of instruction to a connected approach. A transmission approach is what we generally think of when we say traditional teaching, in which rote procedures are emphasized and the information is fed to students solely by the teacher. This method works to minimize critical thinking, persistence, creativity, and in the worst cases, their enjoyment of the subject. A connected approach works to have students make connections, solve difficult problems, and work collaboratively to explain their methods. With that in mind, the remainder of this video will focus on four aspects of coaching math teachers. Direct coaching, classroom observations and debrief, typical math teacher pushback, and additional resources for coaches, advocates, and math teachers. Let's start with direct coaching. As a prologue to coaching, I'd like you to consider engaging your math teachers in the following conversation. What is the purpose of teaching mathematics? My guess is initially they'll come up with something like, apply math to the real world. It's used in science. They use math every day. Math is everywhere. And all that's great. But if its primary and only use is through the real world context, why not just teach it in the context of a science or economics class? And that might be something that your school wants to do. But I would recommend digging a little deeper on the question of why math, or what is math instruction uniquely positioned to do? And I suspect teachers will eventually get to something more like this. Students become problem solvers. Students become self-sufficient. Students become resourceful. Students become persistent. Juxtapose that desire of math teachers with the standards and curriculum they are convinced that they must cover entirely. Sometimes these are diametrically opposed. Classroom observations. Looking back at our connected vision of math instruction, here's what learning looks like in a math classroom. Rather than individual activities based around listening and imitating, we want to see students discussing mathematics collaboratively. In that respect, the mathematical discussions taking place in the classroom are the primary and perhaps best indicator of the quality of math instruction and the learning taking place. So when you're looking around the classroom, be on the lookout for mathematical conversations and strategizing. And from the facilitator, look for these things. Did the teacher highlight novel thinking or even errors? Was there a debrief or reflection piece at the end of the class? Were students expected to discuss mathematics with each other? And here are some things to ask students. How did you choose to attempt this problem in this fashion? How do you know if you're doing good work in this class? Is it just based on correctness? During the debrief, here are some, here are some additional questions to ask teachers. How did this task foster these qualities we discussed earlier? How do you know if students are problem solving, strategizing, and making connections in their learning? When students solve a problem, what kind of feedback do they get? Hopefully these debrief questions will foster a, a, um, a deeper conversation on math teachers and their, and their practice. Now, here are some examples of some typical pushback, along with some potential responses. I would love to do problem-based learning or even PBL in the future, but my students need the basics right now since they are so low in basic math skills. Here is a suggested response. Are, are the problems 
and students being given open-ended enough to allow for all levels of math expertise to participate, at least initially. What kind of problems are your students being given? A good problem is one that all students can access on some level. Students aren't assessed on all those other qualities. Response. Maybe it's time to start assessing on those qualities. What kind of data collection has your school started around assessing deeper learning and problem solving? I don't have time to come up with problems every other day. Response. If nothing else, textbooks offer a service in that they're filled with hundreds and hundreds of problems. Many of them are low level and do not promote mathematical thinking. However, some, maybe just a few per section, may provide the basis for good, thought-provoking problem with multiple entry points. They may have to be modified a bit, but they're in there. For the coach, I would have teachers bring in their curriculum text and look through the end of section problem. Are there any that could be modified to create a good problem that would spur some good need to knows? Also, consider the problem-based learning library. It's mostly algebra and geometry, but we've got a couple algebra two uh, problems here and there. Also, many curricula are now promoting this problem-solving approach. Great problem resources can be found through Carnegie Learning, IMP, and the Dana Center, and lots of other places. So for this last section, we're just going to look at some quick resources that are available. The first, formative assessment lessons. For a teacher struggling to getting out of a traditional teaching model, these might be a nice bridge to a problem-solving environment. Or frankly, if students are getting too lost in the product and missing out on the mathematics, these would be a nice way to rein them in and keep the focus on the math. They're standalone, pseudo-inquiry-based lessons utilizing formative assessment. They each have a pre-assessment, a collaborative activity, a debrief and sharing out portion, and a post-assessment. They can be found in the NTN resource library. Math instructional rubric. In conjunction with network teachers, NewTek has created a math instructional rubric as a guide toward improving math instruction. This can be found in the Quick Guide on Mathematics in the NTN Resource Library, as well as many other of these resources. I hope this video was instructive in your coaching of math teachers. If there's one piece of advice I could give, it would be to not let your anxiety of the math content prevent you from asking math teachers to reflect on what and why they're doing what they're doing at all times. Feel free to email me with any additional questions or comments you have around coaching math teachers. Thanks and best of luck.